So the main thing that we really want to hammer home is that the Clayson condensation is just another type of addition elimination. It's just, that's why I started with a review of addition elimination. Uh, we just looked at a bunch of simple cases. The Clayson condensation is just a slightly more confusing type of a nucleophilic attack on carboxylic acid or acid derivative. And the only reason it's confusing is the same reason that alba condensations are confusing. It's just that the nucleophile is a little bit complicated because it has its own carbonyl. So we have one molecule with the carbonyl attacking another molecule with the carbonyl. And that's the one thing that's going to be confusing to us. So we have to separate the molecule that's acting like the electrophile from the molecule that's acting like the nucleophile. Usually that's easy, because usually the nucleophile and the electrophile look very different. But in the Clayson condensation or an aldol condensation, they look the same. They both have a carbonyl. So this is where it becomes very useful to use our asterisks and our alpha symbols so we can keep track of everything. OK, so we're going to do just another type of this reaction here, um, where we're attacking a carboxylic acid derivative, ba basically an ester, I think. You're attacking an ester. Um, and um, the nucleophile is going to be the alpha carbon in another carbonyl containing compounds. Let's see how that would work here. Here's these reagents. Uh, when you're ready, can you guys propose what would be a, a logical first step here when you're ready? The base of CH2, CH3 would steal an H from the alpha CH3. That's right. Let's show that mechanism. That's absolutely right. Let's uh, talk about that now. So um, you guys did the first deprotonation. Uh, so notice the notational tricks I'm using here. I'm clearly labeling the alpha carbon that's going to be the nucleophile. And I'm asterisking the carbonyl group that's going to be the electrophile. I'm not going to asterisk this carbonyl group because it's not acting like the electrophile. This is important to realize. There will be no changes to this carbonyl group. The thing that's, that thing that's active in this molecule is the alpha carbon. Of course, these are two molecules of the same thing, but we're conceptually separating them because we're going to have one of them attack the other. So these are very useful notational tricks. And I really encourage you to keep using those notations in all of your pictures. So here I'm still labeling the alpha carbon. Um, now remember, we call this an enolate. 
Normally, carbons can't have negative charges. What is it that stabilizes this negative charge? Resonance. resonance. There's another resonance structure where the negative charge is on this oxygen. In fact, I think some of you might have actually drawn that resonance structure instead. Remember, you're allowed to draw whichever you like. I prefer this one because it shows that the alpha carbon is nucleophilic, but you can draw whichever one you like. All right, so we put the negative charge um, over here. All right, and then I think you guys definitely figured out what would happen next, which is that here we attack the asterisk carbon. And I'm trying to write this in the same pattern that I have it up here so that we can see what's going on. Here's the, um, here's the L group. One thing that I mentioned that's very useful to do is to label the L group. So we know all along this is going to be the L group over here. Does that make sense? This is the L group. Remember that we expect, expect to be following this pattern. So we expect this to leave. This is just like all the additional eliminations we were just talking about a few minutes ago, just with a more complicated nucleophile. Um, so here's still the L group. Here's the nucleophile. This used to be the alpha carbon that attacked. Okay. Um, and so far, I think you guys have drawn everything correct. Um, I, I thought that your pictures matched what I had here. Um, th there was a mistake after this point, but I thought that up to this point, you guys uh, had this correct. I just wanted to point out that it's useful to try to match this to this overall pattern up here. Um, but now, what do we expect to have happen next? The leaving group is going to leave because the minus charge is going to push down. Right. That's right. So I think that at this point, you guys tried to protonate this oxygen. Um, and I can see uh, oftentimes we do want to protonate negative things. But remember that what we're planning to do here is just attack the carbonyl and then reform the carbonyl. So there's no need to protonate this oxygen here. Instead, we just want to kick off the leaving group. So that was the only point where I saw that you guys were making a mistake. Everywhere up to here was correct. Uh, but we don't protonate the oxygen. We just kick off this leaving group. And this is very similar to the pattern for a bunch of other carboxylic acid um, and derivative attacks under basic conditions. All right, so that would give us. the other product besides the one I've drawn here? Um, From minus right. OCH no, 2CH3. That turns out to be a very important product to draw. We can't leave out that leaving group at this point. So let's draw this. Notice how I'm continually labeling the alpha and asterisking the carbonyl. Why don't I have any asterisks over here? Because this is not the carbonyl that acted like the electrophile. I'm only asterisking the carbonyl that acted like the electrophile, because that's the one that had things happening to it. It was attacked and then it reformed. Nothing is happening to this carbonyl. It's just helping to stabilize the enolate over here. All right, um, and so now we've, uh, so now we've uh, kicked off this L group and replaced this with something else. Let's go back to this step for a second. Remember, we don't protonate the oxygen here. Um, a lot of people here might be tempted to protonate this oxygen before it leaves. How do we know that this oxygen can't protonate before it leaves? But it's a good leaving group. Actually, it's not a very good leaving group. It's a neutral oxygen. Neutral oxygen. Then would have a plus charge, and we're in basic solution. Good, good. That's good that you're thinking about that. Remember that under basic conditions, everything should have either a negative or neutral charge. And under acidic conditions, everything should be positive or neutral. Or under basic conditions, if you protonated this, while it was still attached to the molecule, it would have a positive charge. That's not consistent with our conditions. Now, this actually is a bad leaving group. Neutral oxygens are bad leaving groups, so there must be some driving force that allows us to kick this off. Well, what's our driving force here? The electron on the conjugation. Let's see. I guess I would not say this is conjugated because it does not have the alternating single and double bonds. It's double, single, single, double. That's too far apart to be conjugated. Uh, if it was conjugated, it would be double, single, double. But here it's double, single, single, so the double. The stability of the final product is more, like the final product is more stable than the starting material. Because it has more resonance. Let's see. Uh, th there might be something to that. These, uh, these two groups can't resonate with each other, however, because they're too far apart. Right, but they can resonate with the carbons and oxygen next to them. I don't know. 
Okay, yeah, there's some resonance over here. All right, that's not a bad way to think about that. There, you were right that this has some extra stability. The key thing is, does nature like carbonyls? Yes. I don't know, maybe we haven't talked about this very much. Um, carbonyl bonds are very happy and stable. I actually should have mentioned that before. 